R ask Reddit. Reddit. What is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? Serious. A few years ago I was walking through the woods off the beaten track a bit and I smelt this really overpowering sweet smell. Being nosy I pulled back the undergrowth to have a look and found a dead body. The guy had clearly been there a while and wasn't looking great. All swollen and green and black with various runny bits. The local wildlife had also been dining well for a few days. I called the police who told me to wait with the body until they arrived. Being in the middle of nowhere it took a while for them to arrive and it got dark and I was just sat there in the dark with him for a long time. It turned out he had committed suicide. For a long time afterwards I had dreams about him and he would talk to me and not nice things. Mainly about how he was angry I had disturbed his resting place and he wanted me to kill myself. Probably just my imagination but all pretty disturbing at the time. He still turns up in my dreams from time to time and no doubt will be tonight after typing this. When I was in high school, I had a really good friend who lived next door to a house that was always up for sale. People would move out in the middle of the night without a word, and it hadn't had the same owner for more than 6 months straight for a couple of years. One night we were really bored and he suggested we go explore the house next door since it had sat empty for a while. We go around back and there's a dog door that he can crawl through, and he unlocks the door and lets me in. The house itself is really unremarkable. It looked like it was built in maybe the 1950s and was a craftsman style house in an older, nicer part of town. My friend's house was similarly built. The kitchen had a really nice built in breakfast table set against a picture window. The house's electricity was off but you could see the street light through the window. My friend and I sit down on the floor, across from this table, and are just hanging out, talking, why, who knows, all of a sudden my friend screams and at that instant, my vision goes black, but it wasn't that I just couldn't see, my body was engulfed in this sickly coldness from head to toe, I start screaming and I feel my friend's hand grabbing mine and pulling me in some direction forcefully, my vision slowly comes back and I start to warm up when I realize that we're outside under the street light. It was December and should have been much warmer inside of that house. Finally I look at my friend and he looks scared. I'm really confused and kind of panicked myself and finally ask him what happened. He says that as I was talking, a black thing, this figure that was all black and only had the vague shape of a girl crawled out from under the table and sat on top of me. Apparently I started groping around with my eyes wide open, like I couldn't see, and he was so freaked out he pulled me out of the house. We're still friends and we bring it up every now and then, but the story itself never changes and it still sends chills down my spine. To this day, I've never felt such blackness or coldness in my life. It was palpable, almost sticky. For a couple of days afterward, I couldn't shake this unsettling feeling. And I could never walk past that house again. Ugh. I'm scared to get out of bed now. When I was about 7 my two brothers and I were playing in an area that was used as an unofficial motocross place. We decided to dig a tunnel for some reason. Being the extra smart guys we were. It took a few hours to dig about 6 feet in and 2 feet high. I was right up at the face when suddenly the tunnel collapsed. It was all dirt with no supports. My world went instantly black and hot, by hot I mean furnace hot. I couldn't move a muscle from the weight of the soil completely enclosing me. I started to really panic, as you do. Everything started turning red which I guess was blood being forced into my head. Every breath was getting harder as the soil constrained me more and more. Even though my hands were near my face I couldn't move my arms to clear the dirt around my head and also started breathing in dirt which made me cough which made me contract my stomach and then I couldn't draw breath at all. This isn't what made me panic though. The total darkness turning red with the incredible heat made my young mind think I was going to hell. I don't know how long I was buried for but it seemed like an eternity. Suddenly I felt something grab one of my feet. My brothers had been frantically digging through the collapse to pull me out and managed to reach me and then pull me out. We never told my parents. I just went home and got hosed down. TL. Doctor got buried alive and pissed myself. My grandmother swore by this story till her dying day. It was during the war in London. And my dad was a baby. 
She was bombed out of her house and was staying with a friend. The friend had set her up in a room on the top floor. Anyway, she was taking my dad upstairs to bed when a figure materialized on the stairs telling her not to sleep in that room tonight. She noped back downstairs and told her friend that she and my dad were sleeping in the sitting room that night. Her friend was annoyed but agreed. That night a bomb exploded near the house and the roof caved in, right on top of my dad's cot. He would have been killed. About two years ago, I was driving home from a family reunion pretty late at night, and the drive was about two hours. I didn't stay the night because I had to be back for work the following day. Most of the drive was on roads with dense bushes and trees on either side, the real creepy ones you see a lot in movies. Anyway, I had been driving about 45 minutes, and I was starting to get really tired. You know how sometimes you just suddenly become really tired, out of nowhere? Well yeah, that happened to me. I knew I wasn't going to last, but I didn't come across any place that I felt I could park and safely sleep. Anyway, after it became clear to me that I wasn't going to find a place to pull up, and my tiredness wasn't going away, I did something very questionable. I pulled over to the side of the road onto the grass, behind some bushes, to try and hide my car from anybody else who was going to come past. The roads weren't empty. I came across another car every few minutes or so. I made a mental note that the time was 11.22, and then fell asleep. Some time later I was awoken by a scratching sound. I looked at the clock 11.50. The sound stopped after a few seconds, and because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around and simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same sound, and it was now 12.40. This time it really freaked me out because the sound didn't stop. The thought ran across my mind that it was just an animal inspecting the car. But why would it return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in my rear view mirror and just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. Now, at the time, I thought it was the damn hook killer. You know the one that scratched that couple's car and then slaughtered the guy when he got out to investigate? Fuck that, I thought to myself. So I got the hell out of there. There was a bend no more than a hundred yards up the road, and as I came around it, there was a fing car, parked off to the side of the road with the driver side door opened. I slowed down just to look to see if anyone was in there, there wasn't. Then I looked in my rear view mirror, I didn't see anything, and all of a sudden, this guy comes sprinting around the corner, he starts screaming at me, shouting stuff like hey, hey you, get the fuck out of your car. Now I know the fuck out of there and sped off. I never saw the guy again. Moral of the story? Don't fucking sleep on the side of a deserted road. My house sits farther back in the lot than most other houses. It is a strange layout as well. The sidewalk runs the length of the living room and ends at the front porch, which lets into the living room. Large windows that do not open allow great light to get into the living room, but at the cost of no privacy. The rest of my family was on vacation, and having the house to myself, I decided I would get smashed. Well, I pass out on the couch in the living room at about 9, when I realized I was too scared to walk back to my room. The couch is right underneath these big windows. I woke up suddenly, not knowing why. I had a severe case of the chills, and I could not figure out why. Then the banging started. It came from right above me. I did not move. But I opened my eyes and looked up at the window. Someone was standing there, pounding on the glass. Without moving, I looked at the cable box. It was around 3 in the morning. The banging continues. Then it stopped suddenly, but I still did not move. Suddenly it commences again, coming from two different directions now. Someone is banging on the window, and another person is banging on the front door. They kept doing it, would not go away. Finally after about 40 minutes they quit. It was the most terrifying event I can recall at the moment. It made me a nervous wreck after that. I called a friend the next day to see if he would come over and stay for the rest of the week. And his response was what the for? So that we can both be murdered in our sleep thanks a lot. Oh. My mother told me this not too long ago. But it happened about 10 years ago now. When my cousin was 17 stroke 18 years old. 
She was in a car crash and had died a couple of weeks later in hospital. She was really close to my dad's sister, our aunt, and used to babysit her kids, who were no more older than 4 years old, all the time. Our aunt's house was under construction just before she passed away and it continued on after she passed away. One day my aunt got a phone call while she was at work from one of the construction workers complaining about a teenage girl who keeps showing up at the house and walking around and that she shows up a number of times during the weeks and it has been happening for a couple of weeks. My aunt asks for a description of the girl to see if she knows her from around the neighborhood. And sure enough the description perfectly matches my cousin who died a few weeks before. Long brown hair, red baseball cap, denim dungarees and a white jacket. When my aunt got home, she showed them a picture of my cousin and that all agreed that it was the girl they seen walking around the site. This story really freaked me out when I heard it because our family was never one to believe in anything paranormal or have anything of the paranormal sort happen to them before.